measure ourselves or how God measures us. again. Um, I thought we'd talk today a little bit about how important it is to measure correctly in the kitchen. Um, if you are cooking something like on top of the stove or even uh, cooking some macaroni and cheese, a casserole that you're going to put in the oven, the ingredients can be pretty flexible. You can put more carrots in, less carrots, more potatoes, add salt to taste. You can add um, other spices as you want to. But if you are baking, actually making a bread, a pastry, something, it's more important to measure accurately because there's a chemical reaction that will take place within the food in order for it to uh, stick together the way that it should, in order for it to rise the way that we want it to, to get a good result. It's really important to measure correctly. And to do that, you need to have the right utensils. Um, everybody probably has a set of measuring cups at your house. And you know that using a teaspoon here is, yeah, measuring spoons, <laughs> excuse me. Um, everybody knows that you really need a measuring teaspoon. You can't just use the little teaspoon that you stir your coffee with and get a, a accurate measurement. Um, you also want to be aware that there are cups made specifically to measure liquids and there are cups that are made specifically to measure dry ingredients. If you try to measure your liquids in a uh, flat topped dry measuring cup, you're going to have to fill it all the way to the top to get the right um, amount of liquid and you can imagine when you start trying to carry this over to your bowl to pour it in you're going to have, you're going to spill some, you're going to lose a little bit. It's also important not to use one of the um, tea cups or coffee cups that comes with your set of plates and dishes. That will not be an accurate measurement either. I want to show you the liquid measuring cups first. This is a liquid measuring cup that has been on the market, you know, for the last several years. Um, the older type looked more like this and when you measured you had to pretty much get down at eye level to see that you had your measurements accurate. If you look this way you would not get an accurate measure. The ones that they're making now have a little tilt to the, um, to the cup and the measurements are on the inside and you can just look down and get the, the right measurement. What I usually like to do is instead of sticking it under the faucet and guessing at the right amount, I like to just get my water, um, milk, whatever, put it in a separate container and then you can just gently pour it until you have the right amount. Exactly half a cup. That's what I wanted. Great. Um, you can also, if you are measuring uh, the dry, dry ingredients or liquid ingredients can be measured with your measuring spoons. What I like to do instead of trying to pour into that, if you will just um, hold your container, maybe tilt it a little bit, you can easily dip out your um, liquid and then pour it into your, into your container. Um, it's really important not to, I know you don't want to mess on your counter, but it's really important not to pour directly into the spoon with it over the top of your uh, counter because, or on top of your bowl, it's real easy to spill a little bit and then your um, all of your ingredients are going to be off a little bit. What I usually like to do is take a plate or a tray and I will hold my measuring spoon or measuring cups over the plate. Then if I spill it a little bit, nothing is um, hurt. I'm going to show you a little bit about measuring something dry. Again, it's better if you can dip into your container. Um, some of the containers have a little straight edge that you can just slide 
your spoon across and get an accurate measurement there. If you don't have that, then you're going to want to use uh, the, the flat edge of a table knife just to go across um, there. Make sure that you look at the knives that you're using. If you can see this knife has a, it's very pretty, but um, there's a curved edge here that you cut with. It's serrated right here. So there's a curve out here. If you measure here, you're going to uh, scoop, the, the measurement's going to be scooped out a little bit lower um, in your measuring cup. This side here is also not straight. There is a, a beautiful little curve there. So this one would not be a good knife to use to level off your um, ingredients. The dry measuring cups are quite a bit more versatile. Um, we can measure our flour. Um, I think it's important for you to remember when you're measuring flour that um, the most accurate measurement is a weight measurement, but most of us measure by volume, measure so many cups. Flour is not measured packed down. Um, you, most of the flour that we get these days is pre-sifted, and so what you're going to do is just lightly, you're not going to uh, shift it around too much or um, pack it down at all. You want it just to be very lightly coming to the top. Um, get a little bit more, and I'm glad I have my container, my plate on the bottom there. Okay, then I'm just going to go straight across the top, and there I have my measurement. Um, just flat across. Great. Okay, there are also there's some other things that um, we have to consider a so, uh, there's some solid ingredients that aren't really, uh, you might not really call them a dry ingredient, but mayonnaise, peanut butter, Crisco, those are going to have to be measured with the um, dry ingredients. If you have a clean measuring cup and you have enough room, you can always just dip into your container and rake up, make sure they're clean before you um, use it. There you have it. Then you'll need to scrape around the sides really well. Um, it might even work better if you had a rubber scraper to get out every little um, part down in the very bottom of your measuring cup. Brown sugar, on the other hand, needs to be measured packed down. You want to pack it down, put it maybe a third or half in there, pack it down real well, and then okay. Again, use your knife to just scoop off the top of it. I don't have my there we go. You know that you have an accurate um, measurement when you can just kind of tump it over and it comes out with the perfect little uh, shape of the container. You know, in much the same way that it's important for us to use the right tool or the right utensil when we are measuring our ingredients in order to get the right result, it's also really important to think about how we measure ourselves or how God measures us. Um, it's important that we realize that God looks at the inside. God looks at the heart. He doesn't look at the outside. Many times we uh, go through our life and we're looking at outward things. I know myself. So there's some mornings I get up and I'm brushing my hair, getting all ready, and I say, oh, you know, those roots are there. I'm going to have to color my hair pretty soon. Oh, but it's not too noticeable, so I just fluff my hair and I go on. I go pick a jacket out of the closet and... Well, it's a little bit wrinkled, but it's just from being in the closet, and it's not that bad. It's, I'm not going to take the time to iron it, so I head on out the door. You know, I put my lipstick on, and it's not exactly the same shade of red as my jacket, but it's a neutral color, so I'm fine. I go on out the door. When I get to the bank, I look at the teller in the window. Her hair is just exactly perfect. She has shiny highlights everywhere. And I'm just thinking, I hope she doesn't see my roots. I'm just kind of shrinking. My self-esteem is going down a little bit. 
But then as soon as I've got my money and I turn around to leave, there's a lady coming in the bank and she's dirty, she's wrinkled, she, you know, looks like she hasn't taken any time with herself at all. I'm thinking, oh, I'm looking pretty good today. And so through the whole day, my self-esteem is going up and down based on the people that I meet, people that I don't even know. That's really a... Um, self-defeating way to look at things because God is not as concerned about the things in our outward appearance as he is the things on the inward appearance. Remember, the scripture tells us that beauty is deceitful, but the woman who fears the Lord will be praised. That's really important to remember. It's also important to remember that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We don't have to be perfect before we come to the Lord, and we certainly don't have to be perfect as we're serving Him. We need to be obedient to Him, and we need to keep our lives free of sin. But we're going to be making human mistakes all of our lives. I was thinking about um, several years ago, the, my neighbor that lived next door to me was my friend Katie. Katie was very tall, um, very willowy. Uh, she could eat anything she wanted. She never. She was thin. She never had to worry about her figure. Um, she was one of those people who could um, stick with a project for a long time. She sat there for about three weeks, re, three weeks working on all of her drapes, and when she, and she was done. I could never stick with a project that long. I like to do those little quickie things. Um, it was several years later I read a book that helped me understand my particular temperament and my giftings and I realized that the ability to um, see things, to have a vision for things and to uh, go forward with new creative ideas was my gift from God. And God has always blessed me by bringing beside me those people um, who can stick with it for the long haul or who can take those ideas that come into my head uh, figure out the details that are going to have to happen and then go with that. But I was with Katie one day and she said, I turn to you and I look at you. She said, you're short. You can find clothes that fit. You said, she said, your skin is flawless. She said, you are turning out those little projects and giving them to people right and left. She said, I would never be able to do that many different things at one time. And so I think it's important for us to remember that we need to measure ourselves the way that God measures us. The standard that we need to meet is the standard of Christ and how He wants us to live. Um, just remember that the next time you pick up a measuring spoon uh, and start to bake up something, just think, what am I measuring my life by? And make sure that you're only measuring your life by Christ, that you're not letting um, yourself be measured by the way you think other people perceive you. Well, it's been great talking to you today, and I hope you're going to remember that the tools you need to be measuring yourself by only is the standard of Christ and His actions, His attitude. Uh, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. That's our goal. You know, I think I have some chocolate chips over there in the cabinet, so I think I'm going to go over and make some chocolate chip cookies. Doesn't that sound good? Maybe you can do the same. When I find my recipe, I'll make sure I put it on the web for you. Talk to you later.